if you, if you have kids and you try to get divorced, the probability that that's going to demolish your life is very, very high. First of all, it's incredibly expensive. So one or both of you is going to come out of that poor. And your market value has declined. Let's say you're the woman who takes the kids. Your market value has declined radically. You're going to be poorer. The man, he's just as screwed because he is now an indentured servant and there's no escape from it. Hey guys, welcome to my channel Flavor. The flavor today is Jordan Peterson. That's right, he's back in The Real Reason for Marriage. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for any future videos. So, without any further ado, let's take a look at Jordan Peterson in The Real Reason for Marriage actually why people get married, you know, just so you know. Because this is built into marital vows. I'm not leaving. Ever. No matter what. <clears throat> it's like, okay, well, that definitely puts a boundary around our arguments, right? Because <laughs> I can't say every time you manifest one of your flaws, which you're likely to do just as often as me, mm -hmm. well, enough of this. It's like, that's horrible, man. If your whole life is... Well, every time you get out of line, I'm, I'm out of here. Mm. It's like, how the hell are you? First of all, you're not going to admit to ever doing anything wrong. True. Second, you're going to be on your... Why? You're like a, like a scared cat the entire relationship right. because, well, who knows? It could just come to an end at any moment. Mm. It's like, you know, people say, well, if, you're, if the possibility of divorce is open, it makes you free. It's like, yeah, that's what you want. You want to be free, eh? <laughs> really? Really? Then why you get married? So you can't <laughs> predict anything. That's what you're after. Jail. It's a vow, and it says, look, I know that you're trouble. Me too. So we won't leave, no matter what happens. That's what the vow is. Well, that's a hell of a vow, but that's why it's a vow, uh, right? That's why you take it in front of a bunch of people. That's why it's supposed to be a sacred act. It's supposed it's like, to be. What's the alternative? What's the alternative? Everything is mutable and changeable at any moment. Well, go ahead. You live, you live your life like that and see what you're like when you're 50. Jesus, it's dismal. Two or three divorces, your family's fragmented, you've got no continuity of narrative. Mm. It's, and it's not good for the kids, not by any stretch of the imagination. Mm. And so it's a form of voluntary enslavement, I suppose, but it's it also is. equivalent to the adoption of a responsibility. And there's mm. more to it than that. If you can't run away, then you can solve your problems. Because it might be, okay, well, you I'm stuck so. with you. I think so. So how about we fix things? Because the alternative is we're going to be in a boxing match for the next 40 years. Mm. That's the alternative. So, and you think you're going to fix problems without something like that hanging over your head? There isn't a chance. You'll just avoid them because that's what people do. It's really hard to, to solve problems, especially in a relationship. We're having a fight and I find out that it's, you know, because you're, you were abused by your uncle when you were five or some goddamn thing. You know, it's like, it's very frequent that that sort of thing happens. Oh. You, there, there's the partner, your partner's you know, manifesting some weird anomalous behavior. You just can't make heads or tails of it. It doesn't seem related to what you're doing at all. They don't want to talk about it. And so as soon as you bring it up, they get mad. And then you bring it up again, they even get madder and they tell you that madder. you're not going to talk about that or they're going to leave. Uh. And so maybe you're really, really persistent because you're kind of a son of a bitch and then they break <laughs> down and cry. Son of a bitch! You know? And then they have this horrible memory that comes flooding forward that's wow. completely, you don't know what to do with it. And then you have to sort it out. It's like, you think you're going to do that unless there's a good reason? You have to know, we better sort this out or we're going to be carrying it around for the next 40 what years. Tangent, eh? That maybe is enough motivation so you'll actually try hard to solve a problem. It's a lot easier to say, well, <laughs> sorry, we're not going there. But then, good, you'll have it every day. Every day, every goddamn day for the rest of your life. You know, and I, and I did this as in uh, marriage being a prison, but... You know, what he spoke about earlier on, I don't think enough people take it seriously. 
you know, sure, you may be in front of a church and sure, or, and or you may be in front of a number of witnesses, but that vow that you're taking, how many people who are married really take it seriously, really take it to death do you part, right? And, and, and at least uh, to a large extent of that, there's a reason why there's a 50% divorce rate, and, and that stat is long, that's an obsolete stat. It may probably even be higher. <laughs> um, so it, it's funny that we go through those rituals of taking those vows in front of people, maybe in front of God, maybe in front of the church, so on and so forth. But how many of those people truly take that seriously? You know, and, and then when he speaks about after that marriage dissipates at 50 and two broken marriages and not good for the children and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how many people forecast that? And then when they're going through that, remember the vows honor the vows, right? Um, uh, but it also then, as he's stating, kind of, if that's the vow to death do you part, then are people walking on their toes? You know, walking, don't want to do anything wrong, don't want to admit to doing anything wrong? Or are they doing the opposite, feeling that if you're sticking to your vows, there's nothing that they can do that you'll leave. And so they take advantage of it. Right? Until you get to a breaking point. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Let's, let's continue. See, there's some, there's some additional problems with divorce that people don't really grasp when they're young. Like, the idea that you can be divorced once you have children, that's kind of a stupid idea. Because you can't. You can, you, can, you can find a limited substitute for your initial freedom. But... If you, if you have kids and you try to get divorced, the probability that that's going to demolish your life is very, very high. First of all, it's incredibly expensive. So one or both of you is going to come out of that poor. And your market value has declined. Let's say you're the woman who takes the kids. Your market value has declined radically. You're going to be poorer. The man, he's just as screwed because he is now an indentured servant. And there's no escape from it. So it's, and it's not so bad if you can negotiate a peaceful separation, and some people can, but lots of times if you have a terrible relationship, it's not like negotiating a peaceful right, separation right. is all that easy. But if you're at each other's throats, good luck to you. <laughs> I think it's roughly equivalent to having non-fatal cancer. It is not pleasant. Uh -oh. It's a 10-year process, 15-year process. It'll cost you $250,000 and it'll tear a big chunk out of your life. And also, it will really disrupt your relationship with your kids. And, you know, you, you bring kids into a step-parent family, they do not do as well. They don't. Step-parents are not as good parents as biological parents, and the data on that is clear. Now, obviously, there are exceptions, because there are terrible biological parents, mm. and there are wonderful step-parents. But if you look in aggregate, it's not that easy to care for children. You need everything you can binding you to them. And if they're someone else's children, mostly they get in the way of the person that you love. Mm. Right? Well, if I'm, let's say you have a child, I'll be right out. Let's say you have a child and I want to go out with you. Every second you spend with that child is the second you don't spend with me. Opportunity costs. And, and there's going to be a price for that. I'm not going to be happy about that. And, and if I have a child, you're going to feel exactly the same way. You might say, well, no, I love children. That's real, man. That's real in regards to um, step-parent and their love for a child that's not their child and the abuse that's, I mean, that exists in a step-parent family. That's real. Um, interesting. You know, just an interesting perspective in regards to the real reason for marriage, you know, because because society says you're supposed to be married, really? You heard what he said. You get divorced with children, it's expensive. You know, it's it's cheaper to keep her. <laughs> That's what they say. It's cheaper to keep her. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for any future videos. Until next time, deuces.
Wet, 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 wet,